Town, the Sacred Realm of Tet, back at you again with Easy Studios, part two, Jehovah's Witnesses, let's go in. Part two. Remember that was the uh, publication from the demonstration. No. And that's one of the, there's two books that we study the Bible with people. Um, that's the first book, What Does the Bible Really Teach? Because as you'll see from the format, we get right into the Bible with that book. And I, I should have asked, do you have a Bible handy? Oh, no. No? Okay. I could bring you one next week. I remember you said about 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we'll hold it to that time. And have you heard anything about Jehovah's Witnesses yourself? Uh, a little Comments bit. Comments from other people, maybe? Yeah, from other people. Anything uh, negative or positive? Mm, it was, it was kind of both. Uh-huh. Well, I can assure you, the best way to find out about Jehovah's Witnesses is to ask one yourself. Right. And here's something else that I'm going to show you. Is that a smartphone you have there? Oh, yeah. There's a website here. And uh, the website, no, I can't get on the internet that way. I can use my phone. JW.org. That's our official website. And there is quite a bit of information. All the information you would, you would want to know about Jehovah's Witnesses is, is there. Any question you have about the Bible, our work, there's several different Bible translations on that website. And I'll just uh, show it to you right quick. We're doing the internet. And... That's jw.org. You can put that in a, in a Google search or Bing search and it'll come up as well. Okay. So you see, there's a website. Now, uh, like last week, you, the week before last, you had a couple of questions. And uh, you remember what one of them was? Yes. What? Uh, Psalms 84, verse 11. Okay. That uh, the Jehovah is uh, the sun and the shield, mm -hmm. and it's spelled it as U N. See here, I did a search on that scripture, and it came up. Now. Uh, I'm going to show you something interesting here. Uh, see, now this is uh, tells you. Well, it uh, came back. Uh, anyway, it's a New World translation. That's where that's from. See the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures re Revised Edition. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are several different uh, translations of the Bible that are on this website. But uh, but anyway, any question that you would have, you, you can put the question there and you can find the answer to it. Okay. Uh, there's quite a bit of information. All the publications that we have available are here and uh, it's a good place to go okay. if you want to uh, the latest magazines that we present to the public to give you information about who we are as Jehovah's Witnesses 
and uh, quite a bit of information. Bible questions answered. Uh, next question, will God forgive me? But uh, brochures, information on couples and parents disciplining children, information for teenagers, question, are we living in the last days? So just remember that website, jw.org. Okay. And Mm -hmm. um, so I looked up that uh, Psalms 84 11 mm -hmm. and uh, the, the beautiful thing is that uh, we, there's also cross reference scriptures and so at the end of Son uh, uh, coincidentally you have uh, a cross reference scripture of Psalms 27 1 and it says Jehovah is my light and my salvation mm -hmm. whom should I fear Jehovah is the stronghold of my life whom should I dread and then also there's another one, Isaiah 60, 19, and 20. Now this will bring it home. For you, the sun will no longer be a light by day, nor will the shining of the moon give you light. For Jehovah will become to you an eternal light. So mm. that was that was the reference. Whoa. So sun, S-U-N, is the correct uh, translation. It was the reference to uh, the actual sun. He's the light. The sun being... When they, they use they use the uh, illustration sun because that's one of the most celestial lights that we that we know of the sun being the brightest light. Well, so that's, that so was, they're saying God the sun. Right. Well, he's yeah. compared to the sun. It's like it's like in a uh, 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 when they um, what's the word uh, when they compare two things. Uh, uh, compare uh, contrast. Yeah, like a simile, uh, a oh, simile yeah. or something like that, oh, or a metaphor. metaphor. Yeah. Yes, sir. And excuse me, this my brother. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah, so that's that's exactly what happened. Uh, the Bible writer used a metaphor uh, to to, mm. uh, to to be exact. It's comparing uh, God to the sun. Well, more he's more than the sun, but that's uh, we as humans. That's how we we see the sun. The sun is bright. How much more so is God? Mm. And and then the other one they uh, they had to reference another metaphor to the shield. That, that that can be obvious to some, but not many. But there's also a cross reference scripture. It takes us uh, takes us back, and, and it's talking to the Israelites as God being the shield, a protector, that protector for uh, for people. So that's why another uh, another eloquent metaphor, a shield. God is our shield. Mm. But that's an interesting question. Now, yeah. uh, very intuitive that you would you know that you caught something like that. Yeah. <laughs> I got another question. Like, how come there's so many translations of the Bible? Well, it's just that there are translations, and, and uh, um, there are translations. Uh, the Bible originally was uh, during the let's see, the Dark Ages, as in history. You talking about the Renaissance era? Yeah, the Bible was, was uh, uh, forbidden to be read, mainly by the uh, Catholic uh, Church, and they felt that only only the uh, priests and bishops could interpret the Bible properly, so they had, held the Bible back from the common people. Uh, but uh, there were men who were lovers of the Bible who... Uh, had enough courage to translate the Bible into the common tongue of, of people back then. And thus in the uh, 1600s you had the translation of the King James right. of Bible uh, because uh, he wanted to provide a Bible that uh, you know everybody could read. Mm -hmm. And so today you have that, that work still going on. You have modern English translations of the Bible. Right. Yeah, you the have new, new international version. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Bible that we use is the uh, New World Translation. Mm -hmm. There is the uh, the New King James Translation of the Bible. And what's interesting about the New World Trans... I mean, the New uh, King James Translation is that God's name has been restored in that Bible 7,000 times, mm -hmm. uh, just as it is in, in the New World Translation of the Bible that we use. And you can look at that online, the New King James Translation of the Bible, mm. where God's name has been restored. But 
the Bible is not readily available, you can't go to stores because they can't get anyone to publish it. Because a lot of people, a lot of religious-minded people and clergymen... Which, which Bible? Hmm? Which Bible? The uh, New King James Translation. You can look that up online, and you'll see that God's name is uh, there in that Bible over 7,000 times. Just as it is in, in the uh, um, New World Translation, the Bible that we use. So simply, translations are... When we talk with people, when we study the Bible with people in their home, we're comfortable with their using whatever Bible translation they're comfortable with using because we're not trying to force our religion on anyone. As uh, we showed uh, your brother a video last week of how we conduct Bible studies, and uh, that's the way we do it. We're interested in people knowing the truth from God's Word, and that's why we come by because uh, we feel we have the truth and we can back it up with the Bible. And we're not trying to force anyone to become one of Jehovah's Witnesses. We want people to learn the truth so that they can make a decision for themselves as to whether or not this is for them. Because it's not for everybody. Like I was telling Aaron earlier, my father, I'm the only one in my immediate family who's one of Jehovah's Witnesses. My dad told me once, when I come to his house, leave my religion on the doorstep. But I had five, five uh, sisters and, and three brothers at the time. My oldest brother is deceased now. But anyway, they would always ask me questions. So I would have to answer the questions based on what I know and, and, and use the Bible. So it would ultimately lead to arguments. That's what would happen. So that's why he told me when I come in this house, leave the, my religion on the doorstep. So I said, what am I supposed to do if you all ask me questions? <laughs> I said, I'm going to answer in the best way I know how. But then he told me later on, even if what I was teaching was the truth, mm -hmm. he would want no parts of it because he enjoyed his life the way he was living it. And my older brother felt the same way because they ran together, did things together. But uh, the good news of the kingdom is being preached by Jehovah's Witnesses and over well over 230 different lands and islands of the sea. And uh, like Jesus said in Matthew 24, 14, I'll share that thought with you. Matthew 24, 14 says, And this good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness to all nations, and then the end will come. And the good news of the kingdom is being preached by Jehovah's Witnesses, like I said, all over the world, in over 230 different lands and islands of the sea. And we clearly recognize that we're living in the time of the end. And that's why there's a, such urgency on our part to carry on this work. And then another uh, scripture in the book of Matthew, the 28th chapter, in verse 19 and 20, it says, Jesus, before he was resurrected to heaven, said, Go therefore and make disciples of people of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you and look I am with you all the days until the conclusion of the system of things. So uh, this is why we, we do this work in obedience to this command that Jesus gave, gave us. I got two questions for you guys. Um, you know how you guys, you were just telling us how uh, God is like a metaphor for the Son. So would the Son be a metaphor for Jesus as well? Would the sun be a metaphor? Because um, you you know they say he's the um, the son the father I mean the son of the father 
and I'm, I've seen in numerous accounts where he is portrayed like the sun that's in the sky because they show him walking on water oh stuff like that okay i mean you as far as this you talk about s-u-n sun yes the sun that uh you know as far as being a beacon mm -hmm. uh, a light uh, a bright and sh uh, shining light i mean you know i would venture to say yes so would that make god and jesus the same person no i i, I figured that's where you was going with that that's a good question though um in uh john in uh john the, the first chapter Mm -hmm. uh, uh, proceeding on through uh, all the way through the end of the chapter, uh, I want to say 114, if I may. Uh, I'll share this with you. It's, it's an interesting thought. And then, uh, well, let, let let me go to the to the most famous one. Let's go to John three sixteen. Everybody knows that one, but we'll, we'll look at we'll look into it a little deeper here. Okay, John three sixteen. For God loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son. What does that sound like to you? It says we we, we It sounds like uh, two different. We said for first of all we said for God, right? Mm -hmm. He loved the world so much. That he gave his only begotten son. Does that same sound like that? Those are the uh, two same people. No, they sound like they're different people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That now that's the scripture that uh, a lot of people they hear it a million times, but don't give a lot of thought to. The term uh, "only begotten" is an important term too. Um, not to get too deep, but "only begotten" means that Jesus was the only one created by God Himself. At, uh, all other creations were created through Jesus. Jesus was his master worker. But Jesus was the only creation that God created himself. His only begotten. Begotten by God himself. With God's own hand. But everything else was created through Jesus. With that being said, it's impossible for them to be the same. Right. I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, because I... Only reason I ask is, you know, I, I hear a lot of people sure. talking about the um the Holy Trinity, sure. and they get they get confused in it because they they really don't it it doesn't like break down it doesn't ex I would say it doesn't explain itself enough. It doesn't. It doesn't. People say that it's a mystery. That's how they uh, when they come to a point where they can explain, they say it's a mystery, and uh, you don't uh, need to to know all the answers. Right. But nowhere in the Bible will you find the word Trinity in the Bible, no. mm -hmm. uh, nor the idea of three being one. Right. Uh, Jesus said that uh, uh, God was greater than what he is. Yes. And uh, when he was on earth, he prayed to his Father, yes. and he couldn't be praying to himself. Right. So that's where you come up with the thought, the idea of the Trinity, it's not, it's not in the Bible. It's man-made. It's a man-made. It's a mm. all, it's a philosophy that was uh, inculcated and infiltrated into Christianity a long, long time ago. I'll, I'll give you that. It was a long time ago, but nonetheless, it was a philosophy uh, that that was uh, that was thought up. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, brother Persia. I want to say by the, by a Greek philosopher around that time mm. uh, time period. Yeah, yeah, it, it makes sense though. Yeah, it do. The mythos. But the last question I had for you guys, you know, in um, chapter four, no, the book Galatians, chapter four, verse twenty-four, it says Abraham. His whole story is uh is allegory. When he talks about his um him having a wife by the, uh, uh, I mean, him having a child by the good woman and the bad woman. Before it breaks down to that, it talks about his whole story being figuratively taken figuratively. Uh, that's Galatians. Galatians chapter 4, verse 24. So what's the question? If if they're saying that his story is being taken figuratively and he's supposed to be like the father of the Hebrews, I, wouldn't that mean that the Hebrew story is taken figuratively as well?
that mean? What again? Would that mean the books or the stories that come after him and the Hebrews, would that be would that mean that their stories are taken figuratively as well? If his story is being taken figuratively. looking and uh, our, our translation is uh, uh it says these things may be taken as a symbolic drama mm -hmm. for these for these women mean two covenants the one from mount sinai which bears children for slavery and which is hagar now hagar means sinai a mountain in arabia and she corresponds with jerusalem today for she is in slavery with her children but the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. Uh, we'll stop right there. So, I I I, I see what you say. I I don't know the um the translation. If, I, if it did, I if think it that was in the um. If it, I think that's the new international. The new international. international if it did use the word figurative. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, I would think that uh symbolic drama. Now I can see, I can see your myth with it. You see the word symbolic. Mm -hmm. Symbolic meaning, at the, uh, from what I understand, that this is being used to explain or to to relate to something that was going on at that time. Doesn't mean that it didn't happen. I, I could, I could, see what I'm saying? I can interpret the difference between symbolically because you, you can use it in more than one context. There you go. But you, when, absolutely. It, when you say figuratively That's, or like a allegory, that that just makes my mind allegory think something Allegory is else. a powerful word. You have to be careful, you know, how it's used. But symbolic, symbolism, symbolism uh, as uh, the greatest teacher, Jesus, mm -hmm. used a lot of symbolism, a lot of uh, um, illustrations. Mm -hmm. And so, but doesn't mean it didn't happen, but it was to explain something further uh so so whoever they were talking to they can grasp the concept and not only grasp it but embrace it within their heart and so oh, we know about uh we know about uh uh abraham uh rather yeah and we know about that story you know because a lot of times that that was told throughout the generation so so they know about that so to uh, to relate to what they were trying to learn then they, they use that symbolic drama to further explain so they can embrace it in their hearts and, and fully embrace it and say, oh, okay, now we understand. So okay. allegory, that's Jesus. a powerful word. Y'all be careful, you know, okay. you know, where, where that would be used. So did it happen? Absolutely, it did happen. All, 2 Timothy 3.16 that says that all scriptures are inspired by God, beneficial for teaching. So don't, that's, that's the faith that you can have in that. That's a comfort that you can have in all scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation. No matter, no matter the translation, there, and, and no matter the author, because the author was inspired by God. So all scriptures are inspired by God. What, uh, isn't, isn't Genesis wrong by Moses? It was written by Moses, yes, sir. So who came first, uh, Moses or Adam? Oh, at, well, according to the Bible, uh, Adam, the first man. Hmm. Oh, did, so, like, did Adam How did have he a, know? You're right. You wonder, how did Moses know? That's what we come in with. That's what 2 Timothy 3.16 comes in. All scriptures are inspired by God. Hmm. So it, just just imagine like this. Say you have, uh, say you have a standard secretary. And you have, uh, he or she has a boss. And, and the boss says, I need for you to write a memo uh, to all employees involved. And uh, with this, I need for you to say such and forth. Well, what is the secretary doing? She's typing it. 
But, but who? But who's giving her the information? The boss. Right. Even though he didn't write it himself, the secretary wrote it. But those are still his words mm. being being conveyed through the memo. So, so, so Moses is supposed to be the secretary. Yep. And God is the boss. So Moses talked to God. <sighs> God talked to Moses. Yeah. Now oh. here, here, uh, all all uh, sixty six books of the Bible are listed here, and it tells you. Who, who the writer was and uh, mm. the place where they were written and the time that's covered with with the writing like the book of uh, so the book of uh, what Genesis yeah. it was written in 1513 BCE mm. and the time covered mm -hmm. was from 1513 to 1657 before our common era you said 1657 BC. Mm-hmm. And uh, all the all the books of the Bible, when they were written, and uh, the time period, who the writer was, is listed here. And most most Bibles, it's listed on the inside cover of the Bible. Mm. That that information. Do you do you um do Jehovah Witnesses? Do you guys like believe in science? Yes. We believe in science, yeah. Okay. And and uh, uh, science and the Bible, in many instances, they agree. Yes, they do. They agree. We believe in science. As a matter of fact, it's interesting to note that the Bible said that the earth was round. Mm -hmm. Way before uh, supposed scientists, you know, because the, uh, the, the consensus was for a long time, uh, people believed that the earth was flat. They didn't know. Right. People are visual. They see what yeah. they see. The earth is flat. But there, there's a, I forget what scripture that is, but in the Bible, we talk about way before that, they said the earth was round. I thought uh, that's one of the, and there's many more examples too like that where science and the Bible actually agree. See, I was just trying to, you know, depict the difference because, you know, I, I know a couple of Christians and they yeah. say they don't believe in uh, yeah. science. Yeah. So I was just trying to see because, like are you saying, the Bible teaches a little bit of science from sure. astronomy to astrology to uh, geogra geographics, just, you know, different accounts. It does, different accounts, and you learn quite a bit yeah, about you do. the Bible. You do. But one thing I, I want to, um, you, if you go on the back of the Bible, it shows that um, Africa is, a, is like a little country, and it shows Egypt being separate from that. I think that's false teaching people because in geography we know Egypt is inside of Africa, so I don't understand how they got Africa over here and Egypt over here. Wait a minute, is this something that you that you that you seen and, and then you yeah. took you? Yeah, my I got I got a uh, international Bible upstairs okay. that I'll be studying throughout sometimes. Did you hear somebody say that it was separate? No, I saw it. It's in a book. Okay. I should go, go get it. You probably see it in this one too. This is uh, just so on with Jesus. Uh, yeah, I need to. I tell you what, Lawrence, this is truly refreshing. You know, you don't, you know, sometimes unfortunately in the world we live in today, you don't see a lot of men with that much, you know, foresight, that much, you know, questions you know about different things deep about the deeper yeah. things in life yeah I, I just be curious and got a lot of questions but yeah the christians they they they, they told us that you're not supposed to mess with science hmm. that's what they told us and you're i was just supposed to mess with science yeah don't study it don't get involved with it but when you go to school you gotta you gotta learn science mm -hmm. So I was I was confused. I can see if if maybe they might be alluding to some specific things in science, like of course the theory of evolution, right. which uh, you know is uh, contradictory to uh, creation. Uh, uh, the Bible, of course, you know Genesis one one, uh, all, all throughout the course of Genesis all the way through uh, chapter three, but it supports creation. Now. Mm -hmm. Scientists are, are, are good. Science is good in everything. 
-hmm. But then there's a there's a, a point where you have to make a discernment. As right. long as it doesn't, as long as it doesn't have anything that overshadows what God is teaching. Because what did we say? Second Timothy three sixteen said about all scriptures. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. So that's not that creation account is not in there for nothing. It's in there for a reason. All scriptures are inspired by God. That's that's the motto I use. Because yeah. uh, a lot of times you get people who they get into oh and what if the Bible and you know you can't you can't think like what if you know what if if was a fifth we all be drunk no I'm just saying right? <laughs> no but people get into what if that's why I, I love Second Timothy uh, three sixteen all scriptures are inspired of God point blank period and it's confident to know so I'm I'm so you can use that the Bible can be used and that's what we do as Jehovah's Witnesses. We use the Bible as the final authority. Mm. Mm. So, so Adam was the first first man that uh that God made. First human man. So, so is Adam black? I don't know. You mean like black like we know of today? Yeah. That I don't know. Black man? No, nah, I don't know. It, it's interesting. Uh, uh, as far as uh, a skin tone, you never really see the Bible uh, go into detail. No, no I'm talking about like, like nationality. Nationality. Now you get yeah. the, uh, um, what's he, what's he, I don't know what you, Brother Percy. Hmm? Sure was he you, blind? Yeah, I'm sure you heard that question. Yeah. No, he wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't? No. But here's something. In, in his loins was uh, was the um, the DNA, the genes for, for all races of mankind. Because they were all offspring of Adam and Eve. So within his uh, loins there is uh, sprung all the races of mankind. And then of course, uh, according to the Bible, after the flood of Noah's day, uh, there was just Noah and his sons and their wives. So from that group of eight came all the races of mankind. Hmm. Even Chinese? like Chinese, Japanese. Uh, uh, and here's, here's something that's really interesting to me. You take a doctor, no matter where he's at on the face of this earth, right. he can cut you open and find your heart, <laughs> your lungs, uh, your organs, because we're all the same. We're made right. the same. Right. You know, well, there's no superiority in, in, uh, in, in skin color, not with God. Right. And that's what the Bible teaches. So so what, what language was the first Bible written in? Hebrew, Aramaic, because that was the uh, the common language of uh, of the day. That was the first language. Mm -hmm. Well, that Hebrew, was the language of the Old Aramaic. Testament. What about the New Testament? Yeah, uh, New Greek. Testament was yeah, Greek. Yeah, Greek. Greek. Yeah. But here we go. Where they show Africa right here, and they show Egypt right here. That looks like that's the gamut of me, man. On one line, say, line. say look at the look at the coast. Uh, because uh, Africa is the continent. Right. Egypt right. is the, is the country. It's the country. Country is one of the countries. Northern Northern Africa, but yeah. still one of the countries in in Africa. I don't. This don't look like this is the same to me. Well, because we know Africa is not a country. First off. <laughs> and it's it's not it's not the, it's not on the coastline near the Mediterranean Sea, which is this part right here. Egypt is, but Africa isn't, and Egypt is inside of Africa. So I mean, this is misleading right here. Oh, I told you. Wow. See, Africa, Egypt. Mm. But then they got Italy up here, and that's just that's misleading. And Asia is just this little small spot right here. Well, you got hmm. you got some some uh, some representations of maps today 
you know, and, uh, as far as I'm, I'm sure, have you ever uh, looked at a globe? But uh, uh, remember, they used to have them in uh, in school or whatever. You'd have your, mm -hmm. you know, your globe. Uh, globe is pretty close, you know, as far as geographically, physically, geographically, on where where some of those countries are. Um, yeah, just take a look at a globe or uh, Google uh, Google a full map of the world and uh, and then you know just take a look at it at, at that way. Uh, we got a, we got a big, like how you were saying, we got a big map like, uh, full blown up map like that outside in our garage. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, when we, we, when we see it, I, I, I know that's yeah, not, it's not right. <laughs> take a look at it. Yeah, take a look at it. Yeah. You know, here, here's a thought in the book of uh, Isaiah, the uh, 40th chapter, verse 26, in reference to, uh, to science, uh, here. In verse 25, it says, To whom can you liken me to make me his equal, says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes to heaven and see who created these things. It is the one who brings out their army by number. He calls all of them by name. Because of his vast dynamic energy and awe-inspiring power, not one of them is missing. So this is in reference to the starry heavens, the stars in heaven, that Jehovah created all these things. And as the scripture mentions, he did it because of his vast dynamic energy, his awe-inspiring power, and uh, not one of them is missing. And just imagine the billions upon billions of stars in the heavens. The Bible says that God knows all of them by name. There's billions upon billions of galaxies. And science is just beginning to explore right. uh, the outer regions of, of, of this galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy. And there are billions of galaxies in the universe. Right. They talk That's about cool. the black holes and all that. Science is just scratching the surface. And I, I guess I say all that to say, Jehovah made us to live forever. And if we live forever, then we'll be able to explore the purpose as to why we were here. And we'll be able to learn more about him and, and the earth that he's placed us on. And that's going to happen. Uh, but we have to do as Jesus encouraged us to do at John 17, 3. He said, this means everlasting life. They're taking in knowledge of, 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 um, of uh, what did it say? This means everlasting life, taking in knowledge of... Uh, you? Of, uh, I lost my thought. John 17, 17.3. Of, of God in Him. That's, that's, that's right. the point. That's the point. Taking the knowledge of. So um, if we do that, then we will put ourselves in line to receive the free gift of everlasting life. Like John 3.16 that uh, uh, Aaron read earlier, uh, it speaks of. Uh, everlasting life and the bible speaks of everlasting life where is it going to be here on earth because this is where our home where jehovah created us and we're going to live forever if we do things god's way learn to do things god's way how does that concept strike you on the concept of living uh, forever on earth it's, it's it's something as humans, you know, we're we're conditioned, you know, you, you know, we were. Some people have said, you know, we're born to die, um, but originally, that was not God's purpose for mankind. Uh, it brought out in Genesis, uh, God wanted uh, Adam and Eve to live forever in a paradise. Hmm. So I, I got a question: Is Adam and Eve mankind, or are they humans? Oh. Um, Mankind, or mankind, humans, are, that's not interchangeable. Because, you know, to be a human, hue means color or pigment. And if you're pale, you can't be a human. That's just against going against the definition. The colonial sisters of the word human or hue, the um, prefix of that word is color. And when you look at pigmentation, it, it stops at yellow to brown. That's what defines a human. Wow. Yeah. I've never. That's my first time hearing it. I've never heard. Yeah, that. Uh, you could look it up. Uh, H U E Q. He's gonna show you the definition. The colonial sisters is color or pigment. 
if if you if you pale, you you can't be human. I mean, that's just going against the definition. Uh, so, so again, but, we don't know how Adam and Eve looked, but we know that uh, they were perfect. And uh, from God's standpoint, because that's what the Bible tells us. And we know that uh, Eve was uh, a beautiful mm -hmm. because uh, when Adam saw her first, he was so moved that he began to recite poetry. <laughs> this is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. He was excited because he, Jehovah had brought all the animals to him for him to examine them and name. But he felt bad because he didn't have anyone, you know, like himself. So Jehovah took a rib from him and formed it into a woman. And then when he saw her, he was just dumbfounded. He was so excited that he began to recite, po recite poetry. Now, was that part being taken figuratively or symbolically? No. Uh, all so that literally happened? It literally happened because we that's what the Bible tells us at uh, Genesis Uh, not to come off disrespectful or rude, but I don't I don't see how a man can take a rib out and make a woman. Well, a man didn't do that. Jehovah did it. Right. The oh, same okay. the same person that created the universe, the stars and the heavens, the one who knows all the stars by name, he did that. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that uh, Jehovah God put Adam into a deep sleep. When he did it, uh, when he took the uh, the rib, you, you know what happens when you get get a uh, rib injury? It's painful. So uh, Jehovah performed surgery on Adam, and uh, he put him to sleep when he did that. Hmm. And that's all here in the Book of Genesis, chapter. And you, know, you you said uh, the stars are in heaven. Mm-hmm. How? How? Uh, you said. Wait. Let Let me get this thought first. It says. Well, I mean, stars. Genesis. Yeah. Well, stars. They're like light years away. So when we see them, we just see just a little dot. But they're really like a big explosion of light or gas. All right. So well, I thought stars was in space. But in outer space, yeah, yeah. Now, now here, Genesis two and verse twenty-one, it says, "So Jehovah God caused a man to fall into a deep sleep." And while he was sleeping, he took one of his ribs and then closed up the flesh over its place. And Jehovah God built the rib that he had taken from the man into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman, because from man she was taken. So that describes the, uh, the creation of, of Eve. And now, if somebody was, you know, first learning about your, um, this religion, and they had, they had a couple questions about it, I think they would be a little weary if they studied a lot because you can point out some contradictions in the Bible that make some someone go, I don't know, because I, I got five contradictions right that I that I know that I study in there, and it, it makes me like I don't I don't know I don't know. <clears throat> All right, let me say it this way. Seemingly contradiction, because the Bible does not contradict itself. I can read you one. All right, read it. We got Genesis um, 32, uh, verse 20. It says, man has, I mean, man has seen God. And then in John 1, 18, it says, man ha no man has seen God. Hmm. What was the first one? Genesis 32, what now? 
Genesis uh, 32 20. Uh, that's, if I'm not mistaken, the account of uh, Esau and Jacob. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a conversation between the two of them. Uh, like verse 17 says, uh, well, we'll begin at 16. He handed them over to his servant, one drove after another, and, his, and he said to his servant, Cross ahead of me. And you are to set a space be between one drove and the next. He also commanded the first one, In case Esau, my brother, should meet you and ask, To whom do you belong and where are you going? And to whom do these ahead of you belong? Then verse 18 says, Then you should say to your servant Jacob, It is a gift sent to my Lord, to Esau. And look, he himself is also behind us. Verse 19 says, And he commanded also the second, the third, and all those following the droves, according to this word, you are to speak to Esau when you meet him. And you should say to him, verse 20, Here is your servant Jacob behind us. For he said to himself, If I appease him by sending a gift ahead of me, then afterwards when I see him, he may give me a kind reception. So here Jacob is saying that when Esau, his brother, saw him, mm -hmm. then he would uh, he would be appeased by all these gifts that he was presenting to him. Because Esau and Jacob, they were at all odds with one another because of uh, a situation. Uh, Jacob got blessings that Esau thought that uh, he should have gotten uh, earlier. And then they parted and separated. A lot of time went by. They, they grew up and they accumulated, you know, different uh, things, possessions, goods, cattle, sheep, uh, men servants, and whatnot. And when they finally met again, uh, Esau, Jacob thought that Esau was going to kill him because he, he stole his birthright in his mind. But that's, that's a different story. Well, that's talking about Esau. Jacob seen Esau. That's what that verse has reference to. Okay. See, the, the power of surrounding context is important. So, uh, so you 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 know you you want to you know read the whole thing. Um, I mean, I guess it could have been a little confusing in eighteen when it said, "Then you should say to your servant Jacob, it is a gift sent to my lord." Now, it wasn't talking about uh, supposed capital L, but that was a term or an expression that they used uh, for respect, for, uh, for honor. Right. And that's something else that, that people accuse us, uh, accuse us of. You hear, we've heard it before, that we take scriptures out of context, mm -hmm. and that, that is not the case. We encourage people to read the Bible. That's right. what we're all about. Read the surrounding verses right. to get a full picture of, of uh, what's being said and what's the situation there because uh, we do not want to be accused of taking scripture out of context so uh, when we study the Bible with people uh, generally we study um, in subject form sub we, we study different subjects like Jesus Christ and Jehovah God and uh, uh, relationship between a man and a woman how they can get along with one another so we, we study the Bible in, in subject format, and that's why we get accused of taking Scripture out of context. But we are students of the Bible. We read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and we encourage people to do that. But uh, one reason why...